Hello and welcome to my video about uniformly accelerated motion. Normally we just say accelerated motion, but it is important to notice that it is uniformly accelerated motion, meaning that acceleration is constant. So in the last video we talked about velocity be being constant, and we started from that perspective, and now we're switching to acceleration being constant. So if this is our, go a little bit thicker than that. If this is our acceleration versus time graph, this is our velocity versus time graph, this is our uh, displacement versus time graph, uh, then we should start with acceleration because acceleration is constant. Now, it could be that acceleration is constant and it is positive. It could be that acceleration is constant and it's zero. Or it could be that acceleration is constant and it is negative. So negative, positive, and uh, acceleration equals zero. Those are our three situations. So let's take a look at what those would do when we move over to our velocity uh, versus time graph. So again, just like in the last video, we can use area to give us the velocity. So at the beginning, what is the area for all of these? Well, the area is zero. So let's actually just start there. And um, with the blue line, we have an area that is increasing. So therefore, and it is a constant rate since it is a straight line. So that means we're gonna have a line that looks something like this. For the red line, we have no area at any point in the um, in the graph, and so our line looks like this. And for the green line, it is an increasing but negative area, and it looks like this. What do these look like with the displacement versus time graph? Now looking backwards to displacement versus time graph, um, we can look back and again, think about area. Uh, but you can see that the area is not just increasing, but it is increasing with the blue line in a more and more increasing rate. So the amount of area that we add for each of these lines that I'm drawing, right, the amount of area that my pen is covering is actually more every second. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to make a curve um, that will look something like this. Okay, and with the red line, well, we also have no change, um, so no velocity, so therefore no di displacement. But for the green one, it is the same sort of thing except curving down. Okay, now um, obviously it will be different depending on uh, where, like, where you start, right? If your starting position is not at zero, this graph could still be the case. Um, so it could look more like uh, like this, okay? Maybe that's what our graph looks like. Um, and instead, it's still the green line. Um, the velocity is um, going to look more like this, where maybe you started with some velocity and you can go down, right? So just because that is what the acceleration is doesn't mean that you started at zero. We're just making some educated guesses and it looks nicely, nicest in the graphs like this. Okay, the other thing to note is that the uh, slope of the displacement versus time graph is the velocity at any given point. The problem is that this slope up here is steep and this slope here is not so steep. So it is hard to take a slope, but you can imagine that the slope ever increases, i.e the velocity always increases. So that could be one way of looking at it. Okay, so the slope uh, goes over. And then the same thing here, the slope of a velocity versus time graph is the acceleration. So just like in the last video, I'm not gonna go into it, but uh, this is an integral, integral, um, and the um, doing a slope is the getting the der is the derivative. Um, again, those concepts don't come up until much later, um, but it's interesting to note that those are calculus ideas, but by having graphs, we can do the math, 
without actually knowing calculus. It's really wonderful. So the slope here is a straight line, so therefore it makes a constant acceleration. Okay, wonderful. The graphs are great, uh, but they're very similar to before, except that acceleration is a constant. Now, just let's take a look at this wonderful equation we have here. A equals delta V over delta T. Um, now, it is important to note the deltas. Um, more important in this equation um, than in the one in the last video um, because we could write it like this. A equals velocity final minus velocity initial. That tells us the change in velocity. So this is actually the way I'd prefer that you wrote that equation up above. Okay, now let's take a look at this question and uh, see if we can solve it. Mr. Drager is cruising along at 50 kilometers per hour when he slams on his gas pedal to speed through a yellow light. Given that he needs to make it through the intersection in five seconds before the light changes red, and his car has an acceleration of three meters per second squared, what is his final velocity? Okay, so what we need to do is we need to solve this equation for the final velocity. Before we do that, I always like it if you can draw a picture. In this quick case, it's, it's not that complicated of a question, so it's not as big of a deal, uh, but it is nice to sometimes still get that idea. So draw the picture. So that my car is going at some speed. That's the initial velocity because that's the speed it's starting at. Okay, and um, we know the time is five seconds because I need to get through that intersection before the light change is red. And um, I know that my car's acceleration is three meters per second squared. So the only thing I'm missing is Vf. Okay, this is wonderful uh, because now we can solve for Vf. So let's go ahead and do that. But actually, first, before we do that, we need to get this value into meters, seconds, and kilograms. In this case, we don't need kilograms, but we will in forces in the next unit. Uh, but we always want to stay in SI units, otherwise units don't cancel, and no one's happy because it will not give you the correct answer. So we need to get 50 kilometers per hour, and we need to change it to meters per second. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by um, meters because we want meters and we want to get rid of kilometers. So one kilometer is a thousand meters. Good. And then we need to multiply by um, one hour is 60 minutes. And one minute is 60 seconds. The reason why is that kilometers cancels with kilometers, hours cancels with hours because it's on top and bottom, and minutes cancels with minutes because it's on top and bottom. Okay, so this um, quick calculation here will give us, let's move it to the side so we can actually see it, um, whoopsies, okay let's just do it there. Um, so this will give us uh, on top we have 50 and 1,000 and a couple ones, but who cares. On the bottom we've got 60 and 60. So that is a nice fraction, which is actually nicer, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and change it into a decimal. So 13.888, repeating. Um, so uh, thirteen point eight eight. Um, eight repeating, and this is meters per second. All right, now we can go back to the uh, equation and solve for V. So what we're gonna do first is multiply by T, because we need to do opposite operators, and the top is automatically in brackets, so that happens last. So we always do um, opposite operators, and we do opposite bed mass. So normally, bed mass means order of operations. Normally we do it in this direction, 
But instead, we're going to do it in this direction because we're doing opposite operators. That means we're doing opposite bed mass. So we want to get rid of time on one side. We want to get the VF by itself. Um, so we multiply by time on both sides to allow it to cancel on the right hand side. Okay, and so now we're left with this equation, which is good, but not quite there yet. What we need to do is we need to um, now add VI to both sides, which I normally just write underneath when I'm adding, um, just because it makes it more clear for myself. So those cancel, it was subtracting, that's why we're adding opposite operators. So now we have uh, VI plus AT equals VF. All right, so this is wonderful because now we can plug in all of our values and get a answer. So um, let's go ahead and try to do that right now. So VI, which is the uh, 13.88 plus um, acceleration, which is three. Oh, and I really should have added better sig digs. Sorry about that. Um, I was getting lazy. Um, times five, which is t seconds. And so that gives us uh, 28.88. So I'm gonna say 28.8 repeating, and this meters per second. And I'm gonna say actually that we wanna have, um, I wanna have a better answer than that. So I'm gonna just change everything to three sig digs to make it, um, make it fit. So that's why it's nice to actually make the questions yourself, because you can just change the sig digs to make it fit the answer. So it should be um, just like this, and now my answer is correct. All right, I hope this video helps you understand um, a uh, situation where we have constant acceleration. Um, so we call it uniformly accelerated motion. I hope this video helps and yeah, good luck.